G'day YouTube, my name's Lance. Welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report. Well, at the moment, 14 to 27, and um, it's a little bit cloudy, and there's been bushfires in our area, and there's cloud and there's smoke, and with the clouds coming across, the old Bundy Bear shed, you can hear the roof creaking and crackling and all that, but I'm hoping that I've got most of that dialed out with my sound equipment. We'll just see. Um, yeah, see how we go with that. Um, it sounds quite noisy in here now, but the, the sound equipment does, um, does sort of look after it. Um, so what do we get up to for the week? Well, another busy week. You know I always have busy ones, and, and look, I do like it like that. Um, I stayed home last Thursday to hop into the 65 and get that ready and um, get the pinion done and all that. Then um, Thursday afternoon, my mate Rocket, he rolled in and bloody, so I thought, oh, I'll have a chat to Rocket. So um, yeah, that pulled up early, so we had a bit of a yarn. And um, Friday, I went into the shop Friday and I did all the emails and all the messages and all that, and probably oh, mid to late morning, I come back home here, I thought, right, I'm out of there, I've done what I need to to keep the show on the road, I'll get out of here and get going. And um, I come home, well, yeah, Tony, he's the Vice President of the Rum City Vintage Machinery Club. He, um, he rang up and said, I need a favour, I'll come and see you. So, yeah, we had to cut some little gaskets for a little model engine. Um, yeah, just had to laser cut some head gaskets. I had some thicker gasket material, some red stuff, but the little 20 amp diode laser wouldn't cut through it. Um, I'm going to take some into the 40 amp, or 40 watt I should say, um, CO2 and see if it cuts through. Probably will, I don't know, um, just as an exercise. But yeah, so by the time Tony come along and we did that and had a yarn and had a look at his new ute and his little dog come out with him and then yeah, it was sort of lunch time and then <laughs> yeah, then it started. There's, there's been fires over the back in Farnsfield and um, yeah, we had helicopters and the helicopters and that looked like they were coming over to the river here to fill up and then go and do a bit of fire bombing with the, um, yeah, just dump the water up. So, um, so with that happening and the shed creaking and the wind just blew up to buggery, um, it just got too noisy to film. So Friday was a bit of a lost cause, um, but I, I did get stuff done early, like Thursday and Friday, I did get some filming done early and I have got the pinion set up here and um, I just had to check everything was fitting and all that and find my adjustments. So that's all coming apart and we'll film that. Um, I haven't, uh, and look, I, I just had to check everything, check the bearings, check all the Sparex bearings are fine and they fit and make sure they were home properly. And, and so um, it's just sitting on the top there. So I've just got to pop that apart and we'll run through filming that. Um, Filming, filming, stripping that off and the bearing on the um, on the pinion shaft there. If you remember way back, I had a Sparex induction heater, and you can put around shafts and nuts and that and expand things. Well, the the pinion bearings and all a bastard to get off because where where your cone is here, you can't get under the back of your cone bearing, on the fat side of your bearing cone, you can't get between there and the pinion to get it off. And usually you've got to, um, even if you put a, a bearing, a, you know, a, a split, we call them flying saucers, but a split bearing pull under this collar here, often it'll br just break the collar out because you haven't got enough to bite by. So the normal thing is get a punch of some sort and bang shit out of it, try and get up enough so you can get a, a coal chisel in here each side and just slowly work it up and um, I, I don't you know, normally put the oxy around there I don't want that much heat in so I tried the induction heater on the bearing and look it worked okay you're gonna have to you're gonna have to look it up and see yeah wait till the video comes out hopefully this week I know I said last week but I've yeah uh, just how it's been um, but I've just done a quick walk around with the video camera for the videos at the end of the stew and you'll see that I've got the gearbox housing bolted up now. That's up there and filmed. Um, I've filmed stripping this out and then I've gone and cleaned it and mucked around. So by the time you, you take a video of undoing something, 
and then you strip it and then you go and clean it and sandblast it and clean all the bolts and all that. There's, it might be three or four hours gone by before the camera starts up again and then sometimes in our climate at the moment there, um, yeah, the wind starts blowing and the helicopters come and the kids over the back on motorbikes. So it's Monday, oh, look, it's probably the 1st of October or something like that. I'm not bloody sure. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a public holiday. It's a king's birthday holiday in Queensland where we live. And um, so normally on public holidays, the morning I can get a little bit of filming done. The afternoon, there's kids over the back with motocross bikes and um, the place just gets noisy of an afternoon, so I don't usually get much filming done. What I don't get done by, say, lunchtime, one o'clock, I, I probably don't get done. So, um, anyway, we'll just see how we go. Um, but, yeah, busy week, busy week at work, and um, I tried to get home. I'm trying to get this show on the road cranked up again um, with videos in the pipeline, and I'm, I'm getting there. There's some up the spout here. i just got to get back and do it. Um, see how we go. Yeah, hopefully it all comes good. Um, Saturday, oh, uh, I hinted a week or two ago that, well, actually last weekend I spoke about selling the Bedford truck and um, Sunday evening we had a fella saying he wanted to buy it as a beer truck um, and, yeah, they come through with the money through the week. So the truck's still here. I told them they're, they're arranging a truck to come and pick it up and so the old Betty's still here. I've got to pull it out of the shed today and um, I'm going to give it a bit of a wash for them and um, yeah, just, just make sure it's ready. The battery's nice and charged and things like that. So um, that'll happen today as soon as I finish the stew. Um, I also hinted that we were going to do a, a little bit of um, change our camping set up a little bit. Um, after going up to the Cape, and Judy and I camped in the back of the Land Cruiser. Look, that worked fine. Um, there was a couple of really windy days where it sort of blew the curtains in and things like that. Um, but we were lucky on that trip because there was a breeze, the insects didn't get to us too much. But next year, I'm hoping to get out Western Queensland. And um, there's a couple of towns, well, probably more than a couple of towns I haven't seen out there, we haven't been through. So I'm gonna try and organise a trip perhaps around April next year, and go Western Queensland. But um, Western Queensland, there is flies. And um, the, another, another thing that I had trouble with while we were camping um, this last time was on the back of the Land Cruiser, often you'd park a long way from the amenities. And even though I have a knee brace that I wore, now and then I, I, I didn't wear as much as I should have probably because when you have shorts on, um, it digs into your leg a little bit, but when you have jeans on, it's okay. But yeah, it was sort of too hot to wear jeans. So um, I had trouble getting to and from the amenities. You know, you'd be walking away and everyone would want to camp near the beach where they can sit and look at the thing. But I, And one thing I remember about that whole bloody trip is all the walks to the amenities. <laughs> and you have a few beers through the day and yeah, you know, if you drink light beers, well, it's a, it's a piss of pot just about. <laughs> I can so um, yeah it just just wasn't good and um, yeah I said to you when I come home one thing I remember about that is I remember all the good stuff you know where we went in helicopters and that but I remember always traipsing off to the loo and way up for a shower and all that sort of stuff and and I'd hobble along and you know, everyone else would just be there and, um, with me dicky knees um, yeah, I was, I was battling with that and I was popping the Panadols. I, the doctor's giving me osteo because it's arthritis. And um, yeah, giving me osteo, ease, Panadol and all that, but um, it was still a pain in the ass. So I said to Jude when I come home, we're not doing that ever again. <laughs> I said, we're out there to have a good time and go on walks and all that, but not spend all your walking miles for the day going back and forth to amenities and things like that. So, um, so I... We looked at, well, for our trip away, we thought we'd have a look at a forward fold camper. And um, the reason for a forward fold is you can back it in somewhere and the tent part, you just winch him up, it goes plop across the top, you put your poles up, there's your bed, and you've got shelter from the wind, you can zip it up, you've got shelter from the flies. Um, the one we bought's got like a tropical... Um, 
a tropical awning over the top, so there's a gap. There's like a silver, a silver tarp permanently there, and then there's a gap about so far between that and your tent where you sleep. And the reason we went for this one too is where your windows are, um, you can pop a couple of poles in and there's an awning, like an awning comes out so far to the side. So if you're out and about for the day, you can actually leave the, um, the window down. The, the, you know, they're just canvas, but you can leave the fly screen up and let a bit of air float through sort of thing. So um, yeah, so we had, we've been looking for one of those since we came back and we worked out we wanted a, an Oz track. Um, it was either that or a, um, or a T-Rex X2, but the Telegraph X seems to have more features and, well, it seems to suit us better and that's the main thing, I suppose. So, um, yeah, there was one in town here and I, I had to sell the Bedford to have enough money in my play tin to buy a, <laughs> to buy a camper. So the money come through for that and um, we contacted people in town that had one for sale. They had a 2018 model for sale. Um, yeah, with no new batteries or anything like that. And by the time we got organised and I contacted them and they said, look, sorry, I just sold last night. And I said, yep, yeah, that's fine, no worries. So um, there was another lady down south and they had a middle of October 2019 model. So we went, we went for a drive on Saturday, Judy and myself, and had a look at that and ended up coming home with it. So um, it's out there. I've just been for a bit of a walk around to show you a few things, but um, yeah, look, it's a good thing. The, the owner of it, it's not quite four years old. They're upgrading to a hybrid caravan, which, you know, your hybrid caravan's got your kitchen outside and that, like the camper has. But um, yeah, it's just a pop top caravan sort of thing. So you, know, you haven't got to pop the tent up. And these tents, Jude and I have had a bit of a practice and yeah, you just wind it out and you put these two up and put those two up and the back one's on a shocky and it's, it's a 10 minute job. So we're sort of happy with that. But yeah, the old fella, the fella that had it um, has never been on a dirt road ever. Um, they've used it a few times, um, you know, um, but they've looked after it. It's, it's absolutely like new. I can find one little mark on it, one little scratch on it. Um, so the battery management system, he um, had had a cheaper one in it and he took that out and he's put an Australian made Red Arc um, BCDC 40. So it's a 40 amp charger. So when I plug it into the back of the Land Cruiser, an Ander 50 amp Anderson plug, we're, we're cranking 40 amps into the batteries in the camper to run the fridge in that while we drive. Um, and when you plug into mains power, it's got a 20 amp charger there. So you just plug that in and it's a, it's a seven stage smart charger. So it just looks after your batteries. Um, after four years, the batteries in it, it had, um, it was sold with two 100 amp hour batteries in it. And the fellow we bought it off, um, he said they were getting a bit crappy. so. Um, he's put two 138 amp hour gel batteries in, or AGM batteries, sorry, in. And, um, but because he was selling it, he only put the King's ones in the cheap ones. Um, so they, they would not have been my choice, but we're just gonna run with it and see when they bugger up, because we've got the Red Arc battery monitor system, we can put lithium batteries in and, and you know, just a better idea all around. So, um, but yeah, we've got to run with that and just see how long it lasts. Um, the King's batteries, King's is like a, um, it's a cheap shit Chinese import company. And if you made a square toolbox, well, well, well I've done it to fire pits and everything. Um, Snowy Peak brought out a nice fire pit that was very popular for $500. King's grabbed them, sent them to China, brought them back, they're selling them for $120. Same thing. So they're a knockoff Chinese company and um, not renowned for good quality, but if you have trouble with something Kings, you just send it back and they know it's shit. And so they just send you a new one. So anyway, we've got those two new, brand new batteries in there. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, it's nice slide out stainless kitchen, the whole thing. So it's what we wanted, we were looking for. So um, yeah, brand new um, at the moment they're I think 25,999 or something like that. 
something like that. I'll, I'll put a link in the description of Oztrack trailers and you can have a look and it'll give you the specs and all that. But um, this being a 2019 one, it's got all the current specs in it. Um, so yeah, look, it's a good thing. And um, yeah, I offered them a price for it. And <laughs> it's funny, I offered them a price, not what they were asking. I, I, yeah, you got a bargain and that, that's a part of the fun of the deal. And um, they said, well, have you got the money, Lance? And I said, yeah, I'll, we'll just pop it straight into your bank account, you know, direct deposit it. And um, they said, oh, OK. And they said, you wouldn't believe the people. Like another bloke says, yep, sold. He says, you keep that for me. I just got to sell me boat to buy it. And um, another fellow says, oh, yeah, look, I want that. Yep, yeah, it's sold. He says, I'll, I'll swap you me Harley Davidson. <laughs> and he said, they said the amount of people that wanted it um, and... Yeah, you had to wait. They, they, they just weren't organised with the money. They, they couldn't do it. So, And um, a lot of interest in it. And we sort of jumped on it. And um, while we were there, there was two other lots of cars came and to have a look at it. And they sort of, they said, oh, we'll go and have a cuppa and come back. And in the meantime, we'd bought it. So, um, yeah, so it, it's a good thing. Um, yeah, it is, it is really like brand new. Um, yeah, um, the boat rack on the top's never been used. It's got the boat rack, and um, we're going to chuck the kayaks on it just for a trial. Um, I said to Jude, you know that boat rack? I see people with a little tinny on there. I said, perhaps we should buy a tinny. She said, oh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> so well, I said, well, we could put a little tinny, a three and a half metre tinny. Mine's four and a half metre. It's just too big. Um, four and a half metre tinny and have a little four stroke 25 horse motor or something in the canopy on the cruiser and we could have a fat time, a little fold up trailer and just away we go. And she says, oh, we'll just wait a bit, eh? <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, I, I would probably sell me bigger boat and, and just have a little tinny out, a little bit smaller because the big one, I need two people um, to go out. I can't go out on my own really. So um, anyway, that's another, that's another story for another week. So. But yeah, by the time this old mate had um, upgraded all the um, electrical system in it to the Aussie made stuff, and like I run Red Arc in the Land Cruiser, it's Australian made, it's just good gear. Um, yeah, so it, it ended up being around 11,850 cheaper than if I went to Oztrack and bought a brand new one. So, um, so yeah, it was a good deal. Um, they, they would negotiate, so we, yeah, and he's, he said, all right, I'll drop that price and, you know, I want another thousand dollars off it. He says, I'll drop that, but you've got to have the money right there. Yeah, you've got to have it. And I said, yeah, I'll put it in your bank account now. So, um, so anyway, the interesting thing was then we had to go to a shipping container and get all the stuff out. And like, it's got a big annex out the side and it's got an ensuite on that and um, it's got wind brakes and it's got a lot of stuff we're not going to take anywhere with us because we just like to go light and easy. And um, yeah, we had to go into the shed then and find all these gear and the tent poles and um, yeah, they couldn't find the key for the lock through the wheel. So we had to get the bolt cutters and cut that off. And yeah, they said, you haven't got a grinder or a bolt cutters in your ute? And I said, oh no, I haven't robbed a place in years now. So. <laughs> but the, um, but, and the thing was, we, we put the money across, we got their bank account details and said, okay, there it is. We'll send you an email from the bank saying it's gone through. And so we did that. They took a screenshot of our phone and it went through. And um, five minutes later, I suppose, my phone's ringing. And we were with Oswide Bank. And it's Oz Oswide Fraud Detection Mob. And they said, oh, yeah. Oh, they actually left a message because I didn't answer it because I was talking to the people. I thought, oh, I'm not going to be rude. And then I went to have a look who it was. And it was Oswide Fraud Mob. And so I had to ring Oswide back and they said, oh, yes, um, there's been a transaction on your account. We're just holding the money. We're not going to transfer it through until um, we check with you. And um, so we said, yes, look, that's fine. Um, we had to say our names and you know, Judy answered it. Oh, Judy rang him, really. And had to say who she was and and that, yeah, because it rang my phone. Mine phone's a registered number for the account. And we said, yep, we've just bought a camper trailer. The price was this much. And we transferred it to such and such an account. And they said, oh, great. That's good. It was just a large amount of money. And um, 
yeah, we weren't releasing it until we rang you to see if it was a fraud or not, which, how yeah, good's that? And um, so we said, yep, yeah, look, it's right to go. We are doing that transaction now as we speak. And they said, oh, well, tell the receivers that um, within a minute or two, the money will be released into their bank account. And um, bugger me, it was. Like, yeah, we just, I just kept loading it up and, you know, loading the, the solar panels with it and there's all sorts of stuff with this thing. And, um, yeah, we just kept loading it up. And, um, yeah, and before we left, we said, can you have a look and see if that money made it into your account? I'd just like to make sure. Yep, it was there. So they had their money and we drove out and off we went, drove home and... Um, yeah, got home Saturday, popped it up and had a fiddle and a doodle and I had to work out how the battery system worked. So I've had, I've had all the seats out and I've been down in the boxes. You, you know I had to do that, eh? And um, I've been laying underneath and um, I noticed that um, I was reading that some of the shockies on these campers can be crap. And when I was underneath, like I laid under it under there and I checked everything out. and. and but on the way home, one of the shockies started leaking a little bit of oil out. So anyway, that's just life. Um, there's, um, there's some of my discount gone. <laughs> but uh, there's a couple of things we're gonna do. Um, you can actually, there's a, there's a 120 litre water tank in the back and a 50 at the front, and you can use them all at the sink or um, the 50 at the front's got its own water pump, so you can use that for a shower. And um, It's got a lot of, lot of features in it, and that's what we were looking for for our style of camping so um, so yeah that was yesterday i was just buggering around with that yesterday i was cooking a roast so i got roast meat for the week um and yeah mum come out for a yarn yesterday yeah. the rest of the time i was working out how this bloody camper worked and where to plug the solar panels in and um because it's got a red arc um mppt controller for the solar um yeah, you've got to have an unregulated supply. So um, the solar panel he supplied, it had a regulator on it and he's got little notes on it. Do not use this one, hook that to there. And so um, I have another solar panel up the front there, but it's a regulated supply that I've been taking down the beach camping and things. So um, what I'm gonna do with that, we're probably not gonna use that for our setup anymore. Um, I'm gonna bring it up the back here and I can actually sit it next to the John Deere say and just plug a plug a couple of alligator clips onto the battery on the John Deere and use solar to charge the batteries up. So those solar panels are coming up the back. Um, I am going to make a bracket to take the solar panel. Um, I'm going to have it so we can fit canoes or something or other on the top. And it's 1.7 something metres wide, the, the boat rack. And um, I'm going to have it so when you fold the boat rack up, I can just pop a solar panel up and yeah, so it's fixed all the time because um, the way the camper trailers work normally, you put a folding panel and you follow the sun around, but if you go to the pub for lunch, you can come back and it's missing. So, um, so we've got to make sure that can't happen. So um, the other thing is that it's got a tow hitch at the back and I've started on that already to make a... In our caravan, we actually had a push bike rack inside that I'd made. I'd, I'd bought, but I adapted it. And... Um, so yeah, this has got a spare tow hitch, you know, a Heyman Reese receiver. So there's a thing going there. We're gonna put the push bike rack there so I can put me pushy. I have a push bike here. And if I need to go to the toilet up the house, I just jump on the treadley and go. And it seems I can ride a pushy for miles and it doesn't affect me knee. So um, I'm gonna put a push bike bracket on the back of it. So when I'm out and about um, camping and I've got to get to the amenities or something like that, I can just jump on my treadley and go. So that's fixed that problem. So anyway, it's good fun playing with something new, but um, yeah, the Bedford's going. Um, I'm going to back it in where the Bedford is for the moment um, while I do all the work on the... Well, I just got to make it mine. You know, there's little things that I don't like and I want to adjust some catches and little things like that. So we'll see. So so look, that's all that's been happening for the week. Yeah, most of yesterday, Saturday was going down south to get this thing. Then Sunday was playing with it. And now Monday, I treat Monday as a working day. So I still want to fix the hitch on that. Um, it's coming over quite cloudy and oh boy, we hope we have some rain. Um, part of the week's episode now is um, watering, twice a week watering the orchard, pumping a thousand litre pod and all that. And that's, that takes up time as well. So that's got to happen 
I, I, I did a light water yesterday, then there's still some in the pod with a bit of fertiliser in it. So I'm going to water again this morning once I finish the stew. And then we'll start the pump and fill the tank up. And um, it's also my firefighting thing. And with the fires around lately, um, the air is smoky. Like you can actually see the smoke in the air between the house and the shed. So we're in that season. So um, I'll probably get the John Deere going and um, slash inside my boundary. You know, a couple of slasher widths wide just to... Um, the grass isn't long, but... It's that dry at the moment. I don't want to slash the whole paddock because it'll just stress the grass and probably die. So, um, so yeah, a bit of property maintenance coming up today. And, um, yeah, probably this thing here. I might even sneak another day, a late start at work or something, and see if I can get a bit more done. But, anyway, we'll see. It's just busy. So, But, anyway, now you know as much as I do. So, <laughs> which is not much. But, anyway... Um, that's that was our week um thanks for dropping by there is a few videos at the end and um yeah you'll see i've, I've walked around the camper and opened a few doors and things like that for those that are interested and um yeah that's it we'll catch you next week hopefully we get a bit of rain in the meantime looks this is our storm season so we should be getting some um we've got about a third of a tank of water maybe half a tank of water up at the house um so, yeah, we're sweating on it. So <laughs> we'll see how we go. Okay, I'll shut up. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great week, everyone. And, um, yeah, we'll catch you next week, eh? Well, there you go. That's what we've been away doing. Let's say Oztrack Campers Telegraph X. Seems well made. Um, all the mud guards are stainless and they're proper stainless. The magnet doesn't stick. Um, all the kitchenware and all that is all stainless so yeah we've got a little Yamaha generator oh I suppose I can show you so a little Yamaha generator and a porta potty and then you've got lights that go on in here and a, a little breather so it breathes out of there um, This fella, he's just a big, big storage drawer, and the top one goes right across for the tent poles and that, so, yeah, look, it's a pretty good thing. Um, something we've been looking for, um, it's just another little storage compartment. You can hook up to the mains power here, and um, it's got built-in 20 amp battery chargers to keep the batteries going. The two fillers here, there and there. And for water tanks, it's 120 litres at the back, 50 at the front. Got the wind down legs. That winches for winding it up and down. They've got the boat rack on the top and has not been used. Nothing's ever been put on it. Um, yeah, we'll have to get the rego changed into our name. In this back fully you have a full full slide out stove and there's all your electrics you can fire the battery up and fire the whole lot up from there water tank gauges and yeah the kitchen's pretty fancy um, yeah more drawers up in here so if we pop this out and the bottom drawer here yeah, that's coming out. Need to open that a bit further, Lance. And yeah, that's a bit of prep space with um, pantry underneath. The top drawer. You have another pantry drawer there. And that's the other side of where the tent poles go through there. So, and they all lock shut for us. That comes out there. They give you a list of what the wheel bearings are. A few posts, um, what the posts do. Lock that up. And oh, I locked that up last night, but there's a 95 litre dual zone fridge they threw in with it. Um, all good rubber. 
So, um, yeah, it's a good thing. We're going to have two jerry cans in there, and then two nine kilo gas bottles, handbrake. Oh, it's got a the McHitch coupler on it. I was going to chuck that out and put a DO35 from Cruise Master. But um, look, I've just been looking at that and doing a bit of research on them. Look, I think they're a good thing. Um, that universal joint in the coupler there, that, that's a Land Cruiser universal joint. So before we go out west, out the desert and that, that I'd like to do with this thing, um, we're going to buy a spare pin for the drawbar there. We're going to buy a spare universal joint there. And um, look, just a couple of bits. They're nice and cheap to buy. So, yeah, 30 30 or 35 dollars for the new uni joint and the one that comes standard on them is not greasable and the one that they supply as an aftermarket as a as a part a genuine part um has a grease nipple but um yeah they're they're land cruiser um universal joints they tell me so anyway that's a good thing so that's ready for our next holidays um yeah, we could tow that behind a tractor if we ever went trekking, but I'm, I'm not big on tractor trekking, really. Um, we'll just see how we go, see how it all works out for us. All LED lights and spares and... Yeah, so... There you go. That's what we got up to Saturday after, after looking around for a little while. Okay, so there's the, there's the pinion for the 65. I've just gone through the setup on that and I've got my marks that I need I believe so I'm yet to pull that apart again and do the filming. I just wanted to run it through, make sure it all worked okay first. There's a couple of tricks I did with that. Now the back end's on here and yeah, that's where the pinion goes and in the back here there's a little hole here where the crown wheel flicks oil up. You can't really see that. And it runs into the bearing. I've got to clean that passage out. But um, I'm hoping I can get the pinion back in, the hydraulic pump in, and all that this week. But look, we're getting there. <laughs> Very busy, but we are getting there. <laughs> 